Thingoline is another unbalanced plain weave. This one here is also made with acetate, but the acetate is in the warp and the 32% rayon in the fill. What does that tell us about how much warp yarn there is versus the filling? There's, it's, this is a two to one balance right there. Uh, so again, we have a filament warp and we have a spun filling. Let's look and see if we can find that in just a minute. This unbalanced plain weave this is the last example in this section of the unbalanced plain weaves. This one, again, piece dyed using union dyeing to get a single color with two different fiber types. No finish. It has the filling ribs that we've seen in some other swatches. This one here has poor resiliency. Not surprised, given that it's made with acetate and rayon. Both are not fabrics known for their, uh, fibers known for their resiliency. And this fabric is often used in bridal. So Bengaline is seen in bridal. And you'll see in a minute, uh, you'll recognize this from a prom dress probably in just a second. Okay, so first of all, check out that luster. Right, that luster is characteristic of the acetate. And then listen to that. Can you hear the ribs as I rub my fingernail across them? All right, and so the, the acetate in there is in the... This is the filament, so even though it's not a super, let's get one that's the whole length of the swatch. Okay, that's a really nice long filament. We can see no fuzz coming off of that filament. And even though it's a pretty weak fiber, I can't rip it with my fingers. Whereas in the filling direction, I'll pull off one of these nice big fat ribs. All right, so here is one of the yarns from the rib of the bengaline, and we can see that it's a lot fatter. That's what gives it the ribs in this case. And it is a spun yarn, and so although I couldn't um, rip it with my fingers when I first started, I'm going to unspin it a little bit. You can see how it's getting fatter right there. And voila! These short fibers uh, weren't able to be cohesive once I unspun it. We're moving on into uh, the basket weaves. The first one is the Dimity, which is made with cotton, so that means it's a spun yarn. This particular basket weave does have a cord effect, um, and that's uh, the reason that this particular basket weave is chosen, is to create the cords. We'll see in a moment. The swatch was bleached, so there's the finish, and it's used in children's clothes, and it has moderate resiliency. Right, so actually, this children's clothes should go down there on the uh, end use line. And so here we can see the, the ribbing, right, and the basket weave, how uh, several warp yarns are treated as one, right, and then there's just an occasional filling yarn, right, and these several warp yarns being treated as one creates the rib. All right, and last but not least on this particular page, we have our Oxford cloth, which is 50% cotton and 50% polyester. This means that it was spun. This particular basket weave is a two to one. We'll look at that in just a moment. It, uh, we do not know how it was dyed, um, or actually it wasn't dyed because it's white, but it was bleached and it was mercerized. It has a soft hand and is medium weight and is used in shirts, Oxford shirts to be precise. So let's take a look at this Oxford cloth. All right, so the basket weave means, can you see how those warp yarns are actually in little groups of two? So the filling yarns are all single yarns and I can just pull one of these filling yarns out, right? So there's a filling yarn, it's a single yarn, right? But the warp yarns are actually coming out in groups of two. So two to one with a warping listed first. 